Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to country here today. Welcome you to Warandi Budja, to saltwater country. I'd like to say uh, kaya nyarni nitya barawarich. Um, I am the white belly seagull, is my totem. I'd like to say nyara mort jenanga kwaba budjara. It's good to see you all on country today, on good country. So welcome, welcome to Warandi Budja. When we're on country, we like to introduce ourselves to country. We like to sing out to the country and let them know why we're here on country. So we say, Gema, Dema, 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 Goma, Dema, Goma, Dema, 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 Goma, 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 Yenanga, 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 Nurda, 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 Yenanga, 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 Nurda, 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 Warane, Warane, Boyara, Boyara, Ni, Ni, Ni. I'd like to thank everybody for being on Warani Budja. I'd also like to thank the opportunity to be here at the Witchcliffe Eco Village. It's great to see such a great project on country, delivering beneficial stuff for country. So like we say, Jananga Budjara, if we look after country, country will look after us. We all come together as one mort, as one family in a community. So this is what will be known as a kerop in our language. Kerop is the camp where there will be a Bora Maya, plenty of houses. So plenty of houses upon Budjara, upon the country, where the Mort will come together, the Kirup, around the fires, around the camp. So we say Bora Kora Jarup and Mort, Nyara Mort. Plenty of happiness is filled in our family's heart today. It is so important that we recognise and acknowledge the traditional custodians of this beautiful land that we are standing on. We are privileged to be able to build our eco-village here and call this country our home. We want to acknowledge our history and keep learning from our local elders about how to manage this land into the future. We set about right from the outset to build the most sustainable community we could possibly build in this day and age. So basically, you know, that was looking at 100% renewable energy, 100% water from, from water capture on site from rainwater, fresh food produce being grown on site within the community, carbon negative homes, opportunities for employment on site, uh, recreation on site and so forth. So it was really looking at the village holistically to say how can we produce everything we need to produce on site including enough energy to actually power our electric vehicles. So you know we've we set about with what many called fairly lofty ambitions at the outset of the project and, and we've achieved all of those which you know which I'm really proud of and, and it's because of those objectives and, and, and what we're achieving on the ground as, as well as you know the wonderful social outcomes of living in a community with this diversity and, and with this level of community infrastructure that is drawing so many people to it. Shell and I met at the Permacop Centre in Fremantle, which was a business that I owned a half share in in the early 90s. We've shared this vision to build a village like this for a long time. We both had this real desire to, to live in a beautiful you know, environment. It's been a shared dream and we moved down here 13 years ago to, you know, really to have a bit of a break from the city and to spend some more time with the kids. And then when this property came up for sale, it was actually a property that I looked at in 1994 and identified as probably the best site I'd ever seen to, to build a regional model based on permaculture principles. And, you know, because it had water, it was cleared, it was abutting the, you know, lovely little town, village of Witchcliffe. And so when it came up for sale about 18 months after we moved down here, um, we both thought, right, yeah, Let's, let's give it a shot. We really want this to be a model for the development industry and, and for other communities and everything we're doing is pretty well open source so all of the information is on our website because you know we're wanting people to be able to, to learn from us and what we're doing. I can't wait for the day when we're all living in there and you know we can start analysing just how much carbon we're saving and how sustainable the community is on it as a whole compared to what we do in general in, in, in land development. It's been a great privilege to, you know, to get to this point in time. There's been many times along the road where we didn't think we'd make it. A lot of the approvals and the process to get the approvals has been really hard work. 
now that we're at this point, there's incredible interest in the project from, you know, from government and from the development industry as a whole. And um, people are so keen to learn from what we're doing. I've been incredibly fortunate to have the most wonderful partners in the Perrin Group. It was led by Stan Perrin, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago at the age of 96. He lived an incredible life, was an incredible partner and, and mentor, and really gave me the ability to, you know, as a partner uh, that backed me financially, to be able to achieve the level of sustainability in this project. It's effectively a 50-50 joint venture collaboration between my company, Sustainable Settlements and, and Perrin Developments. We're very proud of, of where we've got to. I think the most exciting thing about the project for me at this point in time is the incredible community of people that are coming to the project. We've got people, I suppose 50% are coming from the Margaret River region and uh, around about 40% from Perth and, and the remainder are coming from all over the place, quite a lot from over east. Um, people from as far away as England and New Zealand are, are being attracted to the project. We're really excited about you know the level of sustainability that we've been able to achieve much of which wouldn't have been possible even five years ago six years ago the evolution of batteries and the affordability of batteries and solar panels you know is really quite remarkable. Affordability has been a real driver for me from the outset of this project when we first moved down to Margaret River about 13 years ago. It became quite apparent to me that a lot of the artisans and um, people that really make the place a special place to live were being driven out by price point and you know housing affordability. Getting a diversity of, of lot sizes and, and price points across the whole village was really important to us. A diversity as we know in any ecology, in any environment, the, the more diverse your environment the stronger it is and it's the same with people. The more diverse our community, be that age groups, socio-economic groups and cultural groups, the stronger the community will be. Ultimately, there's no point producing a project of this level of sustainability if it's not going to be affordable for the people that live in the region. All of the sustainability infrastructure we're providing is very expensive, like microgrids, large Tesla batteries and electric vehicle chargers. In fact, there's over a million dollars worth of infrastructure and landscaping in each cluster. We don't fall within the city-centric parameters of social housing funding, so we've had to work very hard to provide for around 15% of homes within the eco-village at under 400,000. This includes land and a very solar passive energy efficient home with double glazing, solar panels, water tanks, connection to the community battery, community garden, etc. Importantly, this infrastructure will significantly reduce the cost of living. We've been thrilled with the demographic of the people moving in. So we've got an amazing diversity of, of age groups um, and as well as we've got an amazing diversity of professional and, and uh, backgrounds. And we've got everyone from sort of architects and engineers and doctors and builders and through to you know, horticulturalists and nurses and uh, psychologists and geologists and I mean it's just been really incredible the diversity of people that are coming to the project and um, you know that's that's been it's really exciting because if you think about you know moving forward as a community um, the knowledge within the community the shared knowledge within the community is is really exciting as well as the wisdom in the community you know we've got quite a few people in there sort of over 65s and and uh, you know with incredible life experiences and and, and wisdom to bring to the project. In terms of the buyer groups, the largest buyer group at this point are the 30 to 40 year olds, followed by the 50 to 60s, which is our age group. And then the third largest segment is actually children. You know, at this point we've got over 50 children moving in. Just about everyone wants to work from home or retire within the village. So people are actually gonna have time to get into their gardens. I sold a block recently to someone who was a, a metallurgist that works for a, you know one of the big mining companies in Perth, and um, and she said to me, you know, I only need to go to Perth once a month now, um, and uh, for meetings, and I can do everything online. And the fact that we've got MBN fibre to every house and every business, you know, enables people to be able to do that, which is which is really exciting. 
We know we can't keep living as we do at this point in time. Um, you know, we, we consume 10 times more per person than we did only 100 years ago. At the same time, there's, you know, there's, there's three, four times as many of us. We have to learn to live more sustainably, to consume less and to consume only things that are really are truly sustainable. And then at the same time, we've got to start restoring our ecologies. Our ecologies sustain us as well as all the wonderful animals that live within them. And, you know, we're just so, we're so privileged to live in such a beautiful world that it's high time we, we've got to start changing our ways and we've got to, we've got to restore, um, you know, the ecologies that we've been damaging for, you know, for, for the last couple of hundred years.